Are you ready for God's word? 1 Samuel chapter 30, we're gonna read verse one through verse eight and these passages here, it's a story about when David suffered a great um, traumatic event and I'm gonna extract something here that I think will apply to all of us from God's word about our emotions. But let's pick it up in verse one. The Bible says, now it happened that when David and his men came to Ziglag, say let me say Ziglag, it says on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziglag and they attacked Ziglag and they burned it with fire. And they had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. And they did not carry anyone, but they carried them away and they went their way. Verse three says, so David and his men came to the city. It says, and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. And so here what's taken place is David had had some victories in his military campaign, you know, um, eradicating the enemy from the promised land. But while David was having victories over here, the devil or the Amalekites came and cheap shotted them and attacked their home city while they're away. And that's kind of what the enemy loves to do. He always likes to cheap shot you. And they came back and they kidnapped their families. Houses were burned. And it was, it was a traumatic event. And I want you to see here what transpires and how David handles this to see God bring a victory in his life. It says, then David, verse four, and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. You ever cried so much you couldn't cry anymore? We're gonna talk today, okay? We're gonna talk today because there's a place where it goes further than physical. It's a spiritual thing. Verse five says, and David's two wives, Abimnam and Jezreites, and Abigail, the widow of Nahal, the Camelite, had been taken captive also. Now, just so you know, in the Bible, some things are there for information, not application. So, just thought I'd say this, guys, don't get no ideas. God didn't tell him to do this. He was in disobedience. And by the way, just you, one woman's enough. Just trust me, okay? My wife is... Anyway, emotions, just kidding. I love you, honey. I love you. Okay, anyhow. So, just so we know, because guys are like, oh, there it is. No, 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 no. That's wrong application. Okay, let's continue. So... Verse six, it says, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. In other words, bitter, every man for his sons and his daughters. But watch it here. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. There comes a time that you're not gonna have a preacher there, a worship team there. You gotta learn this principle to gather yourself, your emotions, and you gotta encourage yourself, come on somebody, to a place of strength. We won't talk about that today. He strengthened himself, the Bible says. Now let's continue on. It says, verse seven, then David said to Abathar the priest, Abimelech's son, bring me the ephod here to me. In other words, the priestly garment for worship. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. And verse says, so David, watch this, inquired on the Lord, saying, shall I pursue the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall overtake them and without fail you will recover all and I just feel like prophesying that today to somebody that no matter what the enemy thought he took from you God can restore the years and the emotion and the trauma and the things that kind of attack you to recover it all someone say amen I want to talk to you today to tell my message is becoming emotionally stable and strong because if you're going to succeed spiritually, you're going to have to learn this principle of strengthening yourself. Bow your head, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And God, now as we enter the portion of the service where our ears to hear and build our faith, God, we worship you with our intellect. Our intellect is not only for the corporate world and the marketplace, but our intellect is also for our spiritual life. So Father, speak to us and let us be like sponges this morning. Just absorb the truth of your word. The Bible says we will know the truth and the truth's gonna set us free. So Father, let it just speak to us. Give us a rainbow word today that would transform us by the renewing of our mind. We thank you and we're so grateful for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people say amen. Give God one more hand clap. You may be seated and just tell the person next to you, tell them, say, I will be emotionally stable and strong. Tell them that. I see marriage is getting healed already, already. There's breakthrough in the room, <laughs> okay. I was gonna say, tell your neighbor, you will be, but you know, that might go sideways. Anyhow, you can type it in the, in the chat. I will be emotionally stable and strong. I wanna talk today about emotions, about the ability that comes from God 
to stabilize and strengthen us emotionally. Because this is a very, I wouldn't just say important, I'd say extremely important to see the success that God wants for our life spiritually and freedom is that it's going to be real hard to advance spiritually and advance in your life if you're not emotionally stable and strong. God wants this area to be by the fruit of the Spirit with self-control. And I want to talk about that because as we're talking about freedom, this is something we need. And emotions, we all have emotions, right? Everybody got some emotions. Um, some too much, some not enough. You have to pinch you to make sure you're alive. Just, I mean, you guys, show me something, man. You know what I mean? But we all have emotions. Whether, whatever level, we are emotional beings. And I want to start off just my opening thoughts, and then I'll get into the, to the context and the meat and potatoes of the message. But emotions, I want to tell you, they're not wrong, okay? Emotions are God-given. God gave us emotions. He gave them to us. So I know sometimes you'll hear preaching about feelings and how feelings are liars. And, 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 I, and yes, don't, don't, you know, don't be led by your feelings. We're to, we're to walk with feeling but not led by them. But emotions are actually God-given. They're, they're given by God because God has emotion. And the scripture tells in Ephesians, I'm sorry, Genesis 126, it says that we are made in the image of God. And you'll see throughout the Bible, God gets angry. God, the Bible says that Jesus even wept. The scripture tells us that, that there are many emotions in the God that we serve, so we're to have emotion. And these emotions that God gave us are not a curse. And so I just want to start by telling some, somebody that, because somebody I feel might say, I'm just, I hate that I'm emotional. Well, hold on, 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 hold on. What you don't want to do is, is, is because of the wrongful use, stifle or kill the rightful use of God's emotion inside of you because God gave them to us. And I'll even go here because uh, for those that sometimes to the fellas, because I always like to talk to the fellas, man, conference coming up, you know, you say, my wife's emotional. Good. So is mine. Because they're like, wait, are yours too? Yes, mine too. You know, so, and I'm emotional. Guys are emotional too. No guys say that, man. They're like, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. See, you're emotional right there. I'm not saying nothing. You're, you're all emo, bro, you know? <laughs> like, we see you after your team loses. Don't talk to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, bro, it's a game. Chill. You know what I mean? Man, ruin my week, you know? Why are you a Raider fan? That's your fault. No, I'm just joking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting myself in trouble. Anyhow, I lost half the crowd. No, I'm just joking. All right, so emotions, like, they are God-given. We all have them. And we need to learn to use them to our benefit as God intended and not let the enemy attack them. Because here's what I know is true. The enemy loves to attack your emotions. He'll love to attack your emotions. And so what are emotions? Write this down. This is not your first point. I'll get to my, it's only so much room I got on the, on the, the note sheet here. But here's the first thing. Emotions are signals. They're signals. Emotions are signals. God gave them to us so they can give us a signal of how we're doing. It's kind of like the, the gauges on your car, right? The indicators, it shows you how your oil is, your, your, you know, your, your, uh, your water is. Some of you pay no attention to it, but you need to pay attention to it, okay? Your car gonna overheat, tells you where your gas is. Some of you walk, I wish you had faith like you did for your car. Cause you're like, I can make it, I know my car. I, know. I wish you'd be like, I know my God, I can make this. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, sorry. You're like, I, I know it, I know it. They give you an extra gallon, just go, you know what I mean? But anyhow, like those gauges in your car, emotions are supposed to be your, your gauge for how you're doing. Like it's supposed to signal to you, like if you're feeling frustrated, it's a signal. Well, why am I frustrated? Does something need to change? If you're feeling grief, well, well what am I feeling? Do I need healing in a certain area? If I'm feeling, you know, certain a discomfort, they're, they're supposed to be signals. And the, what God wants us to do is to learn properly how to manage the emotion as signals of where we need healing. But, and, and, and it's not, listen, and it's not the signal that ruins the car, it's what you do with the signal. It's not the emotion that will ruin your spiritual life, it's what you do with the emotion. And so emotion is a signal. So here's my second thing about emotions, again, opening thoughts, we'll get to the context here of the scripture, is emotions, emotion is your responsibility. Just write that, say emotion is, my emotion is my responsibility. Just emotions are your responsibility. And you know, my wife and I, I learned this principle through, uh, d during COVID. My wife and I, you know, we started some marriage counseling and, and we went through some counseling with a Christian counselor and we were fortunate to have, you know, he's counseled a lot of pastors across the nation. And, uh, and, and, and don't worry, we're good, but sometimes the counselor needs the counseling. Come on, talk to me, somebody, right? The car, I need to go in for a checkup too. Checkup from the neck up, you know what I'm saying? And so, 
I got bars today. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So we go and, 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 and we start talking about just emotions and anger. And I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, sometimes I get upset. And she's like, nobody has the right to make you upset. I'm like, what? But she, no, nobody has the right. Nobody makes you anything. Your emotion is your responsibility, your response. And I'm like, wow. Well, then I don't want to be upset because you don't have to be. I'm like, this stuff's good stuff, y'all. You know what I mean? And so I'm, I, listen, if you came to church for this next point, I'm going to tell you it's worth it. So I use it on my kids now. Because my kids are like, I'm bored. I'm like, your emotion is your responsibility. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. There you go. There. My brother got it over here. He's like, I wrote that one down. You know what I mean? I'm bored. Well, your emotions are responsibility. What are you going to do about that? You want to paint something? You want to go run outside? Because your emotions are your responsibility. But we need to teach our children that they don't have to feel anything. That when you can use the spiritual gift or the spiritual fruit of self-control, that you can now be emotionally stable. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And strong. Which is going to lead to your freedom. Say amen. And so emotion is our responsibility. And so, and this is something, again, that comes from God, but we got to learn to navigate it because it's not the emotion that kills you. It's how you respond to the emotion. And this is why I love the story we just read, because in the verses we just read, David had suffered in a situation that he had all the right to be angry, all the right to be bitter, all the right to be, feel, feel like the victim. God, why? He had all that right. But he did something that I pray that you grab and you implement it into your Christian formation, your, 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 the renewing of our minds. He did something that the scriptures pen to us, that in the middle of a loss, he did something the Bible says, he strengthened, he gathered his emotion, he gathered the situation, and there was no Pastor Josiah there to preach a sermon. He didn't have the podcast, he didn't have the worship team, he didn't have his friends, he didn't have, come on now, he didn't have nobody because sometimes I thank God for all the friends and even we're here to serve you, but sometimes it's only you and God and your temptation and your mind and your emotion and you're gonna have to learn to go self. We ain't going there. Because the last time we went there, <laughs> we came back a little messed up. He did this, gosh, now Ziklag. Ziklag is so significant because everybody will have a Ziklag moment. You see, Ziklag was, David was anointed king, but he wasn't king yet. And David was no longer in Bethlehem, and he was not yet in Jerusalem, but he was in Ziklag. He was building who he was going to become. And you got to know that in your life, you will have Ziklag moments. That the enemy will come to try to mess with your emotions while you're trying to build what has been prophesied over your life. And the enemy came and cheap shot at him. And he was winning over here, but he cheap shot at him over here. Have you ever felt like you win in some areas, but in some others you feel like it's out of control? Yeah. You're in a zigzag season. And I'm telling you, during a zigzag zig -zig season, zigzag -zig 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 season, I just felt that I'm a, a zigzag season, you're gonna have to learn. Watch this now. You can't control the outcome sometimes, but you got to learn how to control the inside of your life. You got to learn how to get the inner world in line. My emotions. Someone say my emotions. And that begins to help where you're going. Here's your first point. Write this down. Enough of, of, of the introduction here. It only took me 15 minutes. Praise God. Number one, my spiritual success. And I'm going to add to my own point because it's my sermon. I can do whatever I want. My spiritual success. Freedom and success requires me to be emotionally strong. Say when we say my spiritual success and my spiritual freedom requires me to be emotionally strong. It, requ it, is, it is required. It is required. It is required. David would not be able to manage that situation if he didn't strengthen himself and gather his emotion. He had to strengthen himself. 
The Bible says it. Let's read it one more time so you know I'm not making this up. Uh, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6 says it here. It says that David, watch this now. If you put it up from your team, it would be amazing. It says, now David was greatly distressed in the lower part. He says, but David what? He was greatly distressed, but what did David do at the end of the verse? He says, but David what? He strengthened himself where? At the bar. <laughs> he strengthened himself in the club. He strengthened himself by going back to his ex. Oh, Lord, here I go. Help me, help me. Who, oh, Holy Ghost took over the microphone. He strengthened himself. You know what I need? You know what I need? I just need a week and away. I'm going to Vegas. Shout. Because I'm going through a lot. Here's a good question. Where do you go to attempt to strengthen yourself? Where do you go? Where do you go? And are you still going back to the same places that are not strengthening you, they're draining you? Strain, drain, strain. It's almost like drinking salt water to try to quench your thirst. You know, sometimes when I, when I teach God's word, and I often feel like I'm giving you fresh revelation, but sometimes I feel like I'm just telling you something you already know. Like, you know it ain't working. You know that ain't helping you. That's why I'm so, I'm gonna clap for you. That's why I'm so glad you came to church today. Let me, let, let me clap for you. Let, let, me, let, me, let, let me celebrate you for a minute. And maybe you've never had like a father figure or someone celebrate you come to church because on your way to church, like, there you go to that church again. Okay, let me tell you something. Let me, let me celebrate you. You did the best decision this morning by coming to God's house because you said, I'm going to go strengthen myself in the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off these bed sheets because if you would have stayed home, you would have been more depressed in a cold bowl of cereal. But you said, you said, I'm going to get myself ready. I'm going to go get myself right. I'm going to go strengthen myself in worship, in the word, in fellowship. I want to clap for you. Come on, clap for your neighbor and say, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. I'm going to strengthen myself. Here it is in the Lord. Because you see, the world gets it so close, but yet so far. Because culture would say, be strong. That's great, but I don't have the juice to produce. They miss it. That's humanistic. I'm going to know. I'm going to strengthen myself in the Lord. In the Lord. That, that is the difference of this nonsense of new age and, and horrible scope and, and, and all of this. All this yeah, yeah. Oh, you heard me right. I didn't say it wrong. Horrible scope, right? It's, it's like you put, you put in your trust and what's your days? What's your days? What do you mean what my day? Every day is a good. This is the day the Lord has me. I'm going to get into God's presence, man. Talk about new nonsense. I, 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 I'm going to get a new word from God. That's what I need. And the world, that has to, I don't want to do it culture way. I want to do it the kingdom way. I want, and the kingdom way is to gather my emotions in the Lord. Because it's going to be real hard, like I said, to advance in your spiritual life if you're not emotionally strong. It's going to be real hard, I'm going to tell you right now, to see success in your relational life if you're not emotionally strong and stable. It's going to be real hard to see clearly what God wants for you in your family if your family is not emotionally strong. It's going to be real hard for you to see professionally if you're not emotionally strong and stable. Because some of y'all, you are so talented and gifted, and I'm going to say this with love, it is not your gift that's holding you back, it's that your emotions are not stable. Your boss is like, I would love to promote you, but you just a little bit loose cannon, man. You got, you're talented, but you just, and what's holding you back is not your gifts and talents, it's your emotionally unpredictable. And God wants to deal with this area. I think why sometimes we, we disconnect it from spirituality and we think that's like what the world says and, and, and we go, no, God just wants you on fire. Yes, he does, but he also wants you stable. He wants you, wants you clear. He wants you to know. He wants you, come on, somebody, control. Because here's what I know. If David strengthened himself emotionally, internally, and then, of course, he sought God. And by the way, you're going to have to come back for part two next week because I'm only going to get through for one point. And, uh, and so this is the best seat in the best seat. See, just tell your neighbor I'm a season ticket holder. I'm a season ticket holder. I'm going to finish the second half, okay? If you're new to Freedom House, we're not a fast food restaurant. We are a slow cook steak. We take our time in the Word. 
And yeah, amen. All right, so it's not a wham, bam, see you later. Like, like, okay, cool. If you don't come next week, you're going to have haircuts. So make sure you come next week. <laughs> but so much as I'm unpacking this, I'm like, wow. But emotionally, st- emotional, David strengthened himself. Well, the alternative is, if David didn't strengthen himself, David would have weakened himself. Does that make sense? And when we are emotional, emotionally weak, we are spiritually vulnerable. Did you hear what I said? When you're emotionally weak, you are spiritually vulnerable. And the enemy knows that. He loves to mess with your, when you're not, when you're emotionally weak, that's when your decision making, your discernment is off, your judgment's off, you, you, you'll do things and, and you'll start, because you're not stable, and, and then you adopt this, this mentality of an I don't care mentality. Like, you know what, I don't care. You made me mad, I don't care. I'm gonna kick the dog, slap the cat, and scratch your car. <laughs> and break your windows with a baseball bat, you know, whatever that song is. And a white t-shirt, you know what I mean? You're like, like, what are you doing? I don't care. You turn to Hulk. <laughs> but then you come back as Bruce Banner, like, what did I do? Oh my God. <laughs> what did I do? They're like, you went Hulk, bro. But don't worry, there's some she-hulks in this room. We see you. We see you. Don't, don't care. You cute but crazy. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> You just defined my wife, Pastor. Amen. You know I mean? There's some she-holes like, ah, you know, I'm not throwing plates. It's like, what are you, whoa, 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 time out. Hold the phone. When you're emotionally weak, you're spiritually vulnerable. And it ends up deterring your destiny. And watch this, watch this, watch this. It's not the devil. Remember, nobody can make you feel anything. Nobody can make you. It's a choice. Tell your neighbor, say, it's a choice. So what does the scripture say? Let's go back to the text here, 1 Peter 5, 7, next verse. There's this, this verse that, that everybody knows, verse 8, where it says the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. But let me give you immediate context. In other words, why he said that. He says this in verse 7. He says, cast your anxiety. Someone say emotion. He says, cast your anxiety on who? On your spouse. On your kids on your job, on your bank account, on your money. No, he says, cast your anxiety, your worries. He says, cast it on him. Why? Because God cares about you. He cares about your emotional state. Come on, somebody. Cast it to him. Then it goes to verse eight. Now remember, immediate context. What is immediate context? It means that, that the preceding verse is telling you what, it's, what he's talking about. And so, he, he, I, I'm gonna get to it, but if you like more of that, get into Bible college. I love Bible college. My Bible college students, woo! Shout, shout, that's right. But immediate context. In, in fact, this next semester in Bible college, I'm going to be teaching how to properly interpret the word of God. And a lot of people, if you don't know how to properly interpret God's word, then you will misinterpret what he's trying to tell you. And so, so shameless plug, register for Bible college. Amen. Okay, next verse. He says, but cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. And he says, be alert. Tell you never wake up. He says, and be of what? Sober mind. Why? Because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a what? A roaring lion seeking from someone to devour. So did you catch it? He says, cast your cares, be alert and sober mind because the enemy is looking for someone to devour. What's the point? He will devour someone who's emotionally unstable. What? What? That, that when I am anxious, I am, I am angry, I, that, that's like a pheromone to say to Ooh, I smell some steak, carnitas, come on. <laughs> oh, they're all emotionally unstable, perfect time. They're spiritually vulnerable. Here I come. I'm going to get them to make a decision. Like the, I'm going to tell them, go back to the DMs to your ex. Look at, look at. Go, go. Oh, you know what? You know what? That's, God don't love you anyway. To, he, he begins to put these thoughts in your mind. And that's when we've got to say, not, not today, Satan. I've seen you eat up my past. I see, I've seen you eat up my relationships. But I'm not going to give you the second victory. I'm not giving you a second victory. The first victory is you got me, but I ain't giving you a second victory. 
The first time, yeah, you cheap shot at me, but I'm not gonna let you win the second time because I see you, I know what you're doing. You gotta know the schemes of the enemy against your children, against your future, against your sanity, against your alertness, against your stability. And you're saying, I am not that person anymore. I'm not gonna go back because that person died. I buried him in the baptism waters. I left her, I left that old me at the altar. I'm not that woman anymore. I ain't that guy no more. My father failed, my grandfather went down, but it's gonna stop right here. Why? Because I am gonna strengthen myself in the Lord. If that's you, give God a shout and a praise because I'm gonna do it different. The family you're, you're, the family you're creating is more important than the family you came from. But you gotta strengthen yourself. Because sometimes, like I said, I thank God we, there's, we have connect groups and all that. But there are some battles. It's just you, God, and your emotions. That's it. And your spiritual success and spiritual freedom requires that. David strengthened himself. Next week, I'm going to give you ways how to do that. So, so like I said, don't miss it. Have a haircut, okay? Let's read the next verse. Proverbs 29, 11 says this. Watch this. It says, fools give full vent to their rage. But the wise, what do they do? They bring calm when? In the end. Scripture says that fools give full vent. In other words, you're not a fool because you feel an emotion. You're a fool if you give full vent to it. Because not every emotion is meant to be expressed. It should be filled but not expressed. <laughs> okay, let's break that down for a second. It's okay to, to feel it, but it doesn't have to be expressed. No one ever died by swallowing their pride. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got bars today. I'm going to like a whole song. No one ever died by swallowing their pride. It's the Holy Ghost. God bless you. I know what I can say. But I'm not. This is a fool gives full vent. In other words, no filter, no balance. It's like, I just, I just keeping it real. <laughs> I'm just really honest. I call a spade a spade. I call it like it is. No, that's not real. That's rude. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not every emotion. The Bible says a fool gives full vent to their anger. It says no. This is a wise person. Watch this. What does it mean it brings calm in the end? Here's what it means. That the wise person feels the same emotion, but they navigate it to a good ending instead of a blow up. Emotionally stable, emotionally strong, I'm going to live in freedom and I'm going to keep my freedom. So the battle isn't sometimes to get free. Jesus already paid your freedom. The battle is to stay free. Stop going back into that prison and locking yourself up to an emotionally unstable situation. Come on, somebody. Amen, 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 amen. It says, brings calm to the end. So here's what a wise person does. A wise person feels the same emotion that a fool does, according to the scripture. I'm not calling you a fool, but I pity the fool. Okay, it's the scripture. <laughs> you, 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 have to say, you, got, you got the same emotion. But a fool, a, a fool gives full vent where a wise person says, let me navigate this, this emotion so that there actually is a good ending because if we're on the same team, you and your spouse are on the same team, you and the other Christian are on the same team, you and, and the other believer are on the same team, you and the other ministry leader are on the same team, and I know you both are maybe upset, you have the right to be upset because the devil attacked you in a metaphorical zigzag, but here's the situation. As wise people, we're gonna find a way to be emotionally stable because the end is gonna be victory, the end is gonna be uh, uh, unity, the end is going to be God, Christ's likeness in my home. You're looking for a way to have a good ending. You are the main character in your story. Kids are into that right now. I, I'm the char main character in my story. Okay, well, then make sure it has a good ending. Say amen. amen. Check this out. This next verse right here. The Bible then says in Ephesians, I'm sorry, James chapter 1, verse 19. As I bring the worship up here, I'm going to finish point 2 and 3 next week, okay, because I don't want to rush through it. James chapter 1, verse 19 says, my dear brothers and sisters, who's he talking to? Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. And now tell you, they're saying also talking to me too, okay? It says, take note of this. Everyone should be what? 
quick to what? Listen and slow to speak. And then most people stop right there. Quick to listen, slow to speak. Read the whole verse. So you're like, I listened quickly. I'm going to speak slowly, but you're still rude and mean. It still hurts. You are an idiot. <laughs> As if it has any different power. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> no, finish the verse and slow to become angry. That means take off your track shoes. That means take off, get out of your race car to anger and say, I'm going to do a Holy Ghost. God bless you because I am an emotionally stable and strong person in the corporate world, in the business world, with my unbelieving friends, my unbelieving coworker, with the other business owner, because I am going to show a person that has the fruit of the spirit of self-control, and I'm not going to let my emotions ruin what has ruined in the past. Clap if you receive it and you believe it. Shout amen. Because if I'm not slow, here it is right here. The next verse, Ephesians 4.26. So I bring the worship team up one more time. Ephesians 4.26. In your anger, the Bible says what? Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while what? You're still angry. Now, let's go to the next verse. It says, because if you do, right? In other words, you have that anger. And it's not just the fact that you go to bed angry, but you're angry longer than you should be. Okay? That's only supposed to be like a, 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 a one-hour issue. You made a 30-day issue out of it. Oh, I felt that one. Let's talk about that for a second. Sometimes I feel like I step in here, ow, I go, oh. Like a chiropractor, I got your back. I'm like, oh, there's something there. It says, and do not give a foothold to the devil. What does it mean by the sun go down? Yes, of course, make a right for the sun go down, but it means don't be angry longer than you have to. Why did you make a two-week issue that was supposed to be a two-minute issue? So now for two weeks... You're going to bed with it. You're angry, arguing in your mind. You're dumb, you're stupid. I don't care, man. Your mama. I mean, it's there. You're like, you know, you're like, I don't care, man. I will slap her. I will slap, I will slap you next time. I don't even care. Backhand, not even front hand. I will like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a kid. You know, like, you're two weeks. He says, if you do that, here's emotional, right? He says, you will actually give a foothold to the devil. What does it mean, a foothold? It, it, it's a picture is kind of like when my little brother would like hit me behind the head and he would run and he would try to go in his room and I would put my foot and it would stop. I'm like, fool, you in trouble now. Because then I, after, my le- after my leg, I then put my, my leg through, then my shoulder, and then next you know, I'm in, I'm like, what's up? Now, now you, this, it's done now. <laughs> hit me again, you know? <laughs> I have four brothers, so it's crazy. Pray for my mom. Five of us jokers. But the Bible says when I'm angry or my emotions are unstable longer than they should be, that you have given the devil up. So he's like, moment one, I'm kind of in. But then he says, oh, don't worry. Then he puts his leg through. Then he puts his arm through. And next thing you know, he's like, dinner time. Now he's moved into your life. Now it's not what was an issue. Now becomes a soul wound. Now it becomes a family stronghold. Now it becomes a, a bitter root of offense. All that could have been dealt with, now is longer. My spiritual freedom and my spiritual success requires me to be emotionally stable and strong. I want to talk about this. I'm going to finish part two next week. But let's pray on that. Just bow your heads. Father, I thank you this morning. Summer of freedom. Summer of renewing our minds, of growing us and building us, Lord. And as your head is bowed, I just want to tell you, it's, it's, it's a process. It's a journey, okay? Freedom is not a destination. It's a journey. That's why we come weekly to God's house, because every week God's strengthening us. That's why you get into connect groups. It's so important you get into connect groups, because you need to be around more emotionally stable people. Because if you're, if you're all around emotionally unstable people, it's going to bleed on you. You got you to get yourself in the right circles, spiritually, spiritually. So, Father, I thank you because you're doing something across all our church campuses right now, Father. You're preparing us. You're growing us. You're developing us. 
You're healing us. You're renewing our minds. So here's what I'm gonna do as every head is bowed and I count to three if you're ready to say this, 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 this year, I'm gonna commit over the next year. All right, today we have our join the teams happening all across our campuses. Some of you, you need to join the team. You need to get like into an atmosphere that's more selfless, more, more giving of yourself to serve. It's gonna teach you selflessness. It's gonna, it's gonna help disciple you how to truly serve. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 11, the greatest is the servant of all. There's a dying to yourself. It's even proven psych- psychological. They say that when you go out and you, you serve, that it releases endorphins and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's great, but my Bible already told me, you one who refreshes others, will they themselves be refreshed. See, medicine is catching up to the Bible. But that's why you need to get an atmosphere where you begin to grow. So Father, I thank you, God, for what you're doing. So when I count to three, you're ready to commit to being more, to strengthen yourself in the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet. Ready one, ready two, ready three. Come on, let's stand to our feet all together. Come on, somebody. Give God-